belong here with me. You're not really here. Oh, but I am Max. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're discussing the origins of Stranger Things' Vecna. It's me underneath the prosthetics, it's me, um, it's my voice, it's me moving. For this video, we're looking at what we know about the latest antagonist to terrorize Hawkins. Warning, if you haven't finished Season 4 Part 1, there are major spoilers ahead. What did you think of Vecna? Let us know in the comments. Young Henry Creel in spring 1959, Henry Creel moved to Hawkins, Indiana with his parents, Victor and Virginia, and older sister Alice. Victor explains to Nancy and Robin that Virginia inherited a, quote, small fortune from a relative, and then put the money towards a new home in the small town. What I tell you? Wow, this is amazing. It looks like a fairy tale, a dream. He describes his son as, quote, sensitive unaware of Henry's developing supernatural abilities. Instead, Victor believed the house was haunted by a demon, tormenting his family with nightmarish hallucinations. Nightmares. Waking, living nightmares. Hawkins didn't really provide a different environment for Henry, and he still felt like an outcast. But he discovered a nest of black widows in a vent and became fascinated with them and their role in the world. People find them scary, but Henry sees them as the, quote, most important of the predators. They are gods of our world, the most important of all predators. They immobilize and feed on the weak, bringing balance and order to an unstable ecosystem. The carnivorous arachnids are known and feared for their venomous bite and are often symbolic of ideas like transformation, darkness, death, and destruction. Henry, a young boy who's been told by peers and authority figures that he's, quote, broken, could identify with the Black Widow spider. Both are reclusive, intelligent, and misunderstood. They have the ability to be destructive when provoked and are generally feared for their potential. Henry began spending more time with the spiders, developing a hatred for humanity and its societal constructs of time. I could not close off my mind and join in the madness. I could not pretend. And I realized I didn't have to. Unwilling to become a part of a facade, he built up his powers through a grandfather clock, learning how to enter the minds of others, starting with animals. His new telekinetic abilities granted him access to their darkest memories and to uncover secrets of the past. Henry tapped into his father's time in the war and the deep guilt surrounding a particularly terrible mistake that had gruesome results. It's never revealed what his mother's, quote, darkness was, but Virginia became fearful of her son's behavior and sought out the help of a doctor. She wanted him to lock me away, to fix me. Even though it wasn't I who was broken, it was them. And so she left me with no choice, no choice but to act, to break free. But before he can be taken away, Henry uses his powers to kill his mother and sister. He exhausted himself and fainted, which released Victor from a nightmarish vision, leaving him to take the blame for their deaths. But I was still a child, and I did not yet know my limits, and it nearly killed me. It started with one. Convicted of the murder of his family, Victor Creel was sent to Penhurst Asylum, believing that his son Henry slipped into a coma and died a week later. But this was a lie orchestrated by Dr. Martin Brenner, who wanted to study and experiment on Henry. I woke up from my coma only to find myself placed in the care of a doctor, the very doctor I had hoped to escape. Dr. Martin Brenner. Papa. He became one the first test subject at Hawkins National Laboratory, where Brenner began collecting more children with abilities, assigning them numbers and conducting experiments. But one was too powerful for Brenner or anyone to control. You remind me of someone, someone I used to know really well. Can you guess who that is? He was implanted with a device called Soteria to inhibit his strong telekinetic abilities, allowing him to be controlled and tracked. With his powers suppressed and his freedom stripped away, one was now given the alias Peter Ballard, 
and made to work at the lab as an orderly. What if I make it go away? You help me, I help you. Peter, your friendly neighborhood orderly. A lot of what Henry says, particularly in Seven, I find to be quite true, if I'm being honest. The idea that people are putting on a front, I think, is an interesting concept. When casting details for season four were released in 2020, actor Jamie Campbell Bower was slated to play Peter Ballard. The character was described as, quote, a caring man who was, quote, tired of the brutality he witnesses day after day. Bauer is simply credited as friendly orderly, which is how he first appears to Eleven in the Rainbow Room in 1979. Well, well. Look who finally decided to join us. Someone's a sleepyhead this morning. He comforts her after witnessing the cruel treatment from the other lab subjects telling her that she's the most powerful out of everyone. Why? You frighten him. He knows you're more powerful than the others. And he also knows he can't control you. That's all he wants. As a fellow outcast, especially when he was younger, Peter sees himself in Eleven. We think he's being genuine, and to a point he is. Why do you still help? Because I believe in you. It is time you are free from this hell. But it's revealed that this is mostly his way of manipulating his way to freedom. With her trust, Peter gets Eleven to remove the device, allowing him to use his powers to kill everyone in the Hawkins lab. You knew something so small could cause so much trouble. Thank you. When she sees what he's done, she's terrified. Peter tells Eleven his backstory. He reveals his true identity as Henry Creel and how he came to be one. I could make my own rules. I could restore balance to a broken world. A predator. But for good. He explains the resentment he has towards humanity and his desire to change its, quote, deeply unnatural structure. Seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years, decades, each life, a faded, lesser copy of the one before. Wake up, eat, work, sleep, reproduce, and die. Vecna lives. Imagine what we could do together. We could reshape the world, remake it however we see fit. Join me. Peter wanted Eleven to join him in his quest for balance in the world, but seeing him as a monstrous killer, she refused. The two have an epic showdown, which he loses. In his descent into the alternate dimension of the Upside Down, he's struck by lightning and horrifically burned. <laughs> he becomes an unrecognizable creature, who we and everyone else come to know as Vecna. Henry's childhood fascination with spiders and the concept of time followed him into his new identity as Vecna, using tentacles to form his nest or web in the Upside Down. Vecna also plagues his victims with sounds and visions of an old grandfather clock before they die, just like the one from his childhood home. As explained in Chapter 7, Henry slash Vecna gained his strength from others, in this way, he's like a cult leader, luring people in by promising to end their suffering, telling them to, quote, join him. It is time, Max. Time for you to join me. He takes the lives of high schoolers Chrissy Cunningham, Fred Benson, and Patrick McKinney, after tormenting them with waking nightmares, headaches, and nosebleeds. The first time we actually see Vecna, or part of him at least, was when he's outside of the bathroom stall at Hawkins High. Chrissy? Did you hear me? Open the goddamn door, Chrissy! Open the door, Chrissy, or I'm gonna gut you like the fat pit that you are! He uses the source of their shame and guilt to break them down mentally, making it easier to infiltrate their minds. In this weakened state, Vecna creates a hellish landscape forcing his victims to relive the moments they fear the most, tormenting them before taking their lives. 
Max Mayfield falls victim to his curse, but was saved by her friends before he can add her to his collection. At the end of Chapter 7, Nancy was his latest victim, being confronted with her guilt about the death of her friend Barb Holland years before. I see you've been looking for me, Nancy. You were so close, so close to the truth. Since she was investigating the connection between Vecna and Victor Creel, he literally takes her through his origins as she sees his story unfold. Character Inspiration Dungeons & Dragons fans will know Vecna from the fantasy board game as a powerful wizard turned evil lich. The hooded cultists chant, Hail, Lord Vecna. Hail, Lord Vecna. The name Vecna is an anagram for science fiction author Jack Vance, whose work inspired D&D. Stranger Things creators the Duffer Brothers were inspired by their favorite 80s horror villains like Pennywise, Pinhead, and Freddy Krueger. And given that the season is an homage to A Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy was the biggest influence on the character. Bauer had his own inspirations as well, citing Dracula as one of the figures on his mood board for the role. I had um, Christopher Lee was on there as Dracula. I had uh, Pinhead was obviously on there. I had Freddy Krueger on there. Uh, Voldemort was on there as well. And a lot of fire. There was like a lot of fire. The actor also played a young Gellert Grindelwald in the Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts franchises. Though likely un intentional, there are some similarities between the characters, both being dark wizards of sorts, with a similar desire for freedom from societal constraints and reshaping the world. It was you who said we could reshape the world. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Unanswered Questions While Chapter 7 revealed Vecna's backstory, we still don't know what life was like for Henry before the move, other than he was an outsider. Henry's got this isolated view of the world in which he sees it as a place full of lies. He feels outside of it, and that sort of built a resentment in him. As Vecna, his actual role in the Upside Down is still largely unknown. Could he be another foot soldier for the Mind Flayer or just a resident in the realm? Or could his years-long Black Widow obsession have inspired him to create the Spider Monster? Vecna's involvement in the timeline of the Stranger Things universe isn't fully explained either, but it sure seems to be significant. Hopefully, we'll have all the answers when Volume 2 drops in July 2022. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.